Down five halfway through the third quarter. Downtown Indianapolis. Turner. Yo, everybody, what's good? Welcome back to another episode of Past, Present, Future, man. I am your host, Smitty, from the Land Down Under, joined by my great co-host, of course, my guy, Trippy OG, a.k.a. Nick and 30, VSN Network, and, of course, the VSN Network's very own First Lady, Ebony. How you guys doing? We good. I'm good. I'm good. Chill Excited for this episode. Definitely. It's been a minute. <laughs> oh. Um, It's been a minute. It's been a long minute. time, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we, I've had, I've had these up on my, uh, some of these episodes that we got planned for you guys up on my whiteboard for some time now. Um, so there's been a bit of, you know, a bit of a delay and a time off, but that's all right. We've been, you know, working, doing other things. Uh, you know, life gets in the way sometimes, but we're back with some episodes and uh, we're going to be bringing it to you every week with a new episode of this show. As you guys know, we look to, you know, different errors different uh even different sports codes WNBA might be coming soon maybe as well not just the NBA uh and we look at the history of the game the future of it and the current status as well so we bring you all different things mostly a, a look down memory lane of things that have happened or yet to happen and and a bit of pro- uh you know prophesizing about that but let's get straight into this one anyway guys today's episode is on the illustrious and legendary 1996 NBA draft 50 years of the NBA, it was the uh, half century mark uh, for the NBA. Um, so as you guys know, not only was it a great draft, it was the year of, you know, the 50 greatest players of all time got named as well. We had the illustrious gold uh, NBA logos embroidered onto the jerseys. Um, so yeah, just a, just a milestone year that actually was, you know, capped off by a fantastic draft. You know what's crazy though, Smitty? Just to interject a little bit. This 96 uh, draft class, if you really want to get technical, this is where some of y'all favorite NBA players that you say today came out of. I'm number one. Allen Iverson, baby. (laughs) A.I., bro. The Kobe fan, this is our class, baby. This is our class. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, um, before I pass it over to you guys to give a little bit of your intro into it, I'm going to start with saying a great point there made by Trip. The thing is, is for a lot of us, for our ages, you know, um, even even people a little bit older than me, I'm nearly 30. Trippy just turned 30 the other day. A happy birthday to my guy again. But for those people in that 30, uh, that 30 to 40 year, uh, year old range, especially, or even say 28 to, to, to say 40, this was a big and a monumental draft class. I'm growing up. This obviously, I'm only two years old when this happens. Uh, Trips only three. Uh, how old were you around the time that this happened? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't like to ask a woman's age, but roughly, how old were you? I, I, was, I was young. I She's was 21. young. Nah, I was 21. I was 21. You funny? Nah, I was young. She's 21 I like, again. I don't, I don't know exactly. I'm like, I'm gonna give you a, probably about seven. You know, eight. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So, uh, um, for you, a little bit more memorable. You would have been able to probably rem- remember bits and pieces of this when it happened. But I mean. For me, over here, going into what we call primary school, which is kind of like elementary, about the same as elementary school for you guys, these guys were starting to hit their straps, you know. Um, the, by the time I hit school and got out of kinder, it was the basically the first year of the um, uh, of the Lakers uh, dynasty. Um, so obviously by then, Kobe was, what, four years into the league, uh, you know, and they were in the midst of about to winning winning their first championship uh, with that, 
you know, Shaq and Kobe duo. Then you had Allen Iverson tearing the league up as well by this point. Um, you know, uh, a year a year shy of being an MVP. Uh, we had Stefan Marbury, who, although his career was a little bit tumultuous, he was still a big name player, made, you know, all-star teams, what have you. Um, he was bouncing around the league a little bit, but was making an impact wherever he landed. Ray Allen, of course, as we know, Milwaukee, um and and then you know sort of by this point around 2000 he's starting to change his game to really become that pull-up shooter that we knew him to be right um so for those of you who don't remember though ray allen's still a very athletic guy could throw it down with the best of them too that's one thing that hold people on, bro, do hold, tend on, to forget. hold on hold on hold on you gotta let the people know this man when it comes to ray allen at this time if for those that don't know jesus shuttleworth was a thing that movie he got game featuring Denzel Washington didn't come out for no reason. Yeah. That boy was different, bro. Ray Allen was not what you thought. Oh, he just gonna shoot threes all day, bro. Ray Allen, I take it to the rack, dunk on your head, cross you up, mid range, steal a ball, block your shot, do whatever it took. Y'all just know him as the shooter. We know him as the yo, this boy is that guy. Like it was some point where he was better than Vince Carter at a point on I mean, all of them. I mean, except for the dunking part. Yeah, I mean, look. Um, another thing is is the reason that most people knew of Milwaukee, especially over this side of the world, or that had any interest in Milwaukee, was because of Ray Allen, right? So the smaller market teams, especially around that time when it was a lot harder to get a hold of footage or say game showed on cable or whatever, whatever. I mean, Ray Allen forced some of the cable companies over here to make sure that they got Milwaukee game showed at least you know one or two because of the the impact that he was having. Um. And I mean, that laid the ground for what became, you know, some international Milwaukee fans. And especially over here, Andrew Bogut goes on to get drafted however many years later, six years later or so. You know, there's already some Milwaukee fans. So it sort of laid a, a foundation. Um, and then as well, another guy that we haven't, that, that I don't think gets uh, mentioned enough, he went just after Ray did. Obviously, we know Ray got swapped for, uh, for Marbury. Um, but no, Antoine Walker, Antoine Walker, man, he Let's held go. down. He held down the Celtics when they were no good, right? This is a dominant team of the 80s that obviously fizzled out through the 90s with the uh, emergence of, obviously, you know, one Michael Jordan. Um, so, you know, the Boston Boston Celtics struggled a lot through the late 90s and, and, and the early 2000s, right? They had their ups and downs. And the guys like Antoine Walker, obviously Paul Pierce, young at that time too. Um, but, yeah, Antoine Walker coming out of this draft, just uh, underrated. Kerry Kittles at eight, two picks later. Um, you know, put New Jersey on the map, right? Um, that was the know. most iconic one out of all of them, bro. When you're in the top 15, is how the Hornets traded Kobe away to the Lakers. Like, bro, that's the nobody dumbest talk, mistake I nobody ever talks made, about bro. that enough. Nobody right. talk about that enough. If it was if it was New York, they would they would still be talking about it. You know that. <laughs> Definitely. Uh -huh. So Ebony, anyway, let's let's get a little bit of information from you. What have you got there for us? Tell some of the people about some of the ins and outs of this draft and just how special it was. Well, one, it's kind of special for a lot of reasons. You know, you had the high school players and you had two high school players who made impacts, you know. So it was like, you know, a lot of you had a lot of people even back then that didn't want people to come from, from high school straight to the NBA. Right. But you hey, had Jermaine O'Neal and uh, Kobe Bryant. That, who's, who's the two players that came from high school? Just reiterate yeah, that was, one more time. Yeah, it was Jermaine O'Neal Kobe, and Kobe Bryant and also a Taj McDavid, but I don't remember him. <laughs> and and I mean and I mean the year before Kevin Garnett out of high school right ninety five yeah. the year before um sort of really laid the foundation again or pushed the the envelope on more guys coming out of high school right so hence yeah, why had the Kobe and the Jermaines and also it was just it was just a very well, well rounded class because even the undrafted class had had gems you know like even you 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 have the the Ben Wallace you have a coach. That's coaching the team today that was undrafted and Dalvin Ham. So yes. you you that that draft class was so it was so well rounded. You had young, you had the youth, you had people come from high school, you had people come from overseas because you had Agalskis was in that in that uh that draft and Pager Pager was in the the uh, draft also. So you know um, crazy though, as look at when you bring up Pager, I forgot he was even in this class. <laughs> I scroll down, I look. I said, hold up, Page of Story Archivist went before Steve Nash? Mm -hmm. 
Didn't know that. Then Jermaine O'Neal went 17. Igowskis didn't go till 20. Then I'm looking at the rest of these names in between. The biggest yeah. name out of all of them that'll throw you off and be like, wait, he was in this class? Sharif Abdul Rahim went third in this draft. Yeah, that's right. And I totally forgot he was in this draft. Like, I was a big Sharif fan when I was younger. On the Grizzlies, when he was on the Grizzlies, you know, um, I was a huge fan of his. Like, this draft class is the the w- reason I love basketball. Like, it got me attached, you know. You watch the Knicks, you know, the Knicks started it. And, and then, like, learning other players. And my all-time favorite player is AI. That's my, that's my GOAT. You get what I'm saying? That's my personal favorite. So, like, this this is the, the draft that really – like made my my fandom what it is now to this day. These are some of uh, people in this draft. Uh, your favorite player's favorite player right now. You know, um, you see, you see the, uh, Dwayne Wade ask Allen Iverson to be do his uh, ceremony, his Hall of Fame ceremony. So like, it, these are a people you see everybody wearing number three for a that. reason. That's because that AI. That's right. That's you right. You know. CP3 to tell you quick fast, the Wayne Way to tell you quick fast, you know. So these players, and like we said, you got players people forget, like Sharif. If he was to play today, it's it's perfect for him. Today's basketball is perfect yes. for him and a player like Antoine Walker in my eyes. Definitely. Like they have perfect games for and today. Then, and then and then not to forget, obviously, we had New York's own Stefan Marbury who come out of uh, Georgia Tech, Coney Island, uh, Lincoln High School, where obviously Eben, the lovely Ebony was uh, lucky enough to have mm-hmm. high school. Um, and, you know, uh, there's essence of, uh, you know, that he got game that, that sort of speaks to the story of Stefan Marbury as well, right? Um, yeah, definitely. And- it's it definitely, uh, you, his story is similar, uh, you know, That's right. the kid, and, and I mean, Coney Island. Everybody wanted. That's right. And I mean, uh, look at the, uh, I mean, two-time All-Star himself, um, two-time All-NBA third team, uh, obviously a bit tumultuous, but this guy averaged 18 and 8 for his career, right? 18 and 8 mm-hmm. for, uh, for his NBA career, which was uh, from 96 uh, through to 2009. Um, wasn't as good as it could have been. This is a guy who, this is Kyrie before Kyrie. This is the way, I, for anyone that's watching now that doesn't understand, this is Kyrie before Kyrie. Um, a very, a very spiritual guy, a very um, a big, big with his moral compass. Unfortunately, he even admits it himself. For those of you who are lucky enough to have seen his um, documentary, he probably could have handled things a little bit better, but he was put under a lot of stress, unfairly talked about by the media. Uh, it's a little bit better these days the way the media is. But then the, the, the thing that I want to get to is just quickly before we move on to the next topic is he had a, a good, good NBA career, right? Right. And then he went on to become an absolute megastar in China where he was able to go, you know, find love for the game again. And, and you know, they made statues of him. I mean, he won championships. He won MVPs. He created himself. Yeah. So he, he, he made a career over there, too. And uh, not many people get to do that where they have a good, good NBA career and a good international career. So, um, I mean, yeah, man, just a fantastic draft overall. Uh, Trippy, why don't you tell us some, some uh, bits and pieces about this draft? Look. When it comes to this draft, without the trade between Marbury and Ray Allen, all that history goes debunked if that trade does not happen. You don't, get, you don't get the historical run from Ray Allen if he doesn't switch. Because remember, he was drafted by the Timberwolves. That's right. Stephen Marbury was drafted by the Bucks. No trade happens. They don't switch teams. There's no Stephon and KG. You would have had Ray Allen and KG. Now, I'm looking at it like it's funny how Ray Allen didn't want to go there at first, but then you paired up with him down the line to get your first chip. You should have did that from the beginning, bro. (laughs) Uh, See where I'm going with this? Like, that's the key thing I take from this draft. But before we, you know, not even before, like, while we add it, you know, we probably got a little bit of short time because we don't got to do a long episode. Like, bro, we know this draft class. How does... I want to ask this, and I'll send it to, you know, Ebony for this one. How does this draft class, 96, compare to the 84 draft class that they always get compared to? And then I ask you the second question on that, which one is the actually the better draft class? 
Well, you know, uh that that draft class, I ain't gonna get I I wasn't born for it to actually see them play their rookie years, you understand? <laughs> so, so I may be I don't a little none of us born yet. <laughs> I was, I might have been, been I'd be a little biased about it, uh, but I think because overall they have the top heavy stars when you look at it, like they have really heavy hitters in that draft. You you'll have the you have the Hakeem, you got Jordan, Stockton, Barkley, you know, so those are Hall of Fame. You Otis Thorpe, Sam Perkins, Kevin Willis, you you have all these people, you know, um, on this draft. But to me, I just think overall that the 96 draft was deeper. Like you have people in the second round that that, that made impact. You have undrafted people we like we spoke of who have made the impact. You know, you had defenders left and right. It's a bunch of uh, all defensive players in 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 that draft with the uh, Marcus Canby in, in 96 draft that is and the Ben Wallace and you see the MVP. So to me, overall. I think the '96 draft is a <clears throat> is a lot, excuse me, a lot deeper and better in my opinion. Um, I know the goat is in the um, the '84 draft. I get it. I know the goat is in here, <laughs> but um, just the fact that there was high schoolers, people didn't play one uh, day of basketball in college and was able to make an impact, and or not even drafted and have a Hall of Fame career. So these are the people you you have. In, in the ninety the ninety six draft, so I, I have to tilt my hat to the ninety six draft. So I know the go and Hakeem, and they have Buku uh, All Star games <laughs> and scoring <laughs> titles. I get it. Uh, it says that they have a uh, they have twenty players accumulating at least one hundred and sixty win shares. They winners in that. There were winners in that draft. Yes, but hey. uh, I, I <laughs> the, 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 the definition right? of winners, right? Okay. And look, uh, I mean, we'll get to 84 in the next episode for sure. We'll break it, go into that in more depth. But obviously, the reason we mention it, guys, is because it's highly, um, I guess, matched up against this 96 draft, right? A lot of people like to talk about it and say which one's the best. That's up for you. That's that's up for debate for sure. But, um, I mean, look, we will definitely get into that one for sure. This, this draft class as well, just a couple of interesting tidbits before we go to Trippy and then nearly get out of here. Uh, mm-hmm. This draft class pulled... A grand total of 11 All-Stars. 10 of those were drafted, right? Obviously, Ben Wallace, Trippy being the undrafted one. Uh, it had two defensive DPO wise. Had two DPO wise, Marcus Camby uh, in 2007 and Ben Wallace, 2002, 03, 05, and 06, four-time DPO Y. And then you had both Derek Fisher and Kobe Bryant, who have ended up on the Lakers, who won five championships together. Um, so... I mean, there was. I knew Derek Fisher was drafted 24. And if you look at the documentary, he was mad he went after Kobe Bryant, bro. <laughs> and a look, lot of seniors that, was mad in that draft. That class. draft was so deep, they had professional baseball players in it. That's right. Yeah, they did. They had uh, two future future major league players in uh, Mark Hendrickson and Ryan Miner, uh, who were second round picks. So just, just really athletic draft class in general. Uh, we only got a few minutes left here, guys. Uh, uh, one little interesting piece I wanted to let you guys know before we sort of throw it and get start to say our, our goodbyes for this episode is th- in this draft class, the most eligible team with the old lottery system was actually the uh, Vancouver Grizzlies, right? And then it was the... Uh, uh, then it was the the 76ers and the uh, Raptors third, as in terms of who was most likely to get the first pick, you know, the old lottery system. But because Vancouver and Toronto were both expansion teams from the year before, the NBA ruled them as being unable to get the first uh, pick in the 96 draft. So wait, 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 wait. So you telling me Allen Iverson, was supposed to be a Toronto Raptor or a Memphis Grizzly. By, by the odds and by the old lottery, he would have been a Grizzly. He would have been a Van- Vancouver Grizzly. So, so he uh, would have been the original John ja Morant. <laughs> yeah. Him, right? him and Big Country could have did something. Wow. <laughs> nah, I never knew that. I'm sorry. I never knew that. That's taking me... Bro, I don't even think I would have been AI fan. Sharif, was, Sharif could have ended up... Sharif, could have ended up in a different part of Canada, being in Toronto rather than Vancouver. If, uh, or he could have even ended up in uh, Philadelphia if the NBA's uh, ruling on those expansion teams. Because remember, '95 was the year that both those th- um, Toronto teams came into the league. So okay. I mean, both those Canada, uh, Canada teams. Sorry, my mistake. So um, yeah, but look, I just thought I'd land us on that little bit there that I know not a lot of people know and isn't as common a knowledge. But, I mean, it's been another great episode with you guys. It's good to link up again. 
Ebony, hopefully we get to see you more. Is most likely going to be a uh, permanent panel member. Um, 84 draft class coming soon. We've got a lot of other different things. We're not just going to do draft class. We're going to do some teams, some historic teams, and and maybe some M- WNBA stuff. Now we have the uh, lovely Ebony with us. You know what's crazy yeah, about exactly. it? That'd be fun. You know? Another thing that's crazy is we taking it past that. <laughs> Yo, we're going to end up hitting y'all with high school stuff, college stuff, Definitely. even street ball stuff. Let, let's see if y'all really know basketball. There's more to basketball than just, just the NBA and the WNBA. You got to start somewhere before you get there. Definitely. Just know on this show, we're going to talk about it, man. I, Absolutely. Yo, I love it. Oh, Absolutely, it. guys. It's been, good, it's been good chopping up, up with you guys again. Um, as, as always, I am your host, Smitty, I'm joined by my co host, obviously, Trippy OG and Ebony Miss Mad Nick fan uh, over there from the VSN network. Please like, subscribe, find us on the VSN basketball station on YouTube, find us on Twitter, VSN network underscore um, at Mad Nick fan and at Good Kid Burn City. This has been another episode of Past, Present, Future. Peace out.